Okay, hello guys. Today, space is time number four. We will continue today talking about principles of relativity. How was the questions? That you answered? You imagined? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What were your craziest, craziest uh, reference frames? What changing of reference frames? What do you suggest just for me to entertain me? Read a book. Okay. Read a book. That changes the frame of reference. Quitting smoking. Well, you have to start smoking first. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I presume you got the idea, right? Yeah. So now the main the main thing of these questions and the main talk of the of the previous of the previous lecture was um, uh, to understand that relativity actually is pretty uh, pretty general general principle and uh, if you look around you'll see that everything is actually relative whatever you whatever you look whatever has a so-called um, quantum quanti quantitative feature right something which be big or small or whatever right it it's still relative. So if something is big, it's because you are small. If you like, and you are your own reference, right? If you if your size, if you increase your size, the mountains around you will be smaller, right? If you grow up and up and up and uh, bigger than the mountains, mountains will be smaller at all. If you grow up like a lot, your mountains will be like uh, some scratches on the surface. Do you understand <clears> that right now? The same thing with everything, actually. Even with the colors, with emotions, like if you are happy, okay, happy comparing to what? Maybe you never actually felt yourself really happy, you know, like like somebody else. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's uh, you feel so okay. You think it's maybe some some somehow okay, happy, but it's not that happy like you felt it before in some other times, right? So this happy, happiness because of some getting some, uh, you know, ice cream. It's not about I'm happiness so in life. Yes? I, uh, sometimes I'm so happy I started crying. Because I saw because since I was with you for two months. I saw because since Sasha, I'm mm. so happy I started crying. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you, you got the idea. Okay. So we'll continue now. So uh, we got, as if I'm not forgotten, like three principles already, right? We talk about three principles of relativity, right? I. I remind you, it was uh, uh, Galileo Galilei, the main, the first principle, original principle of relativity. And then there were two principles of Einstein, the special principle of relativity, which actually talking about absolute speed. The speed of light is sort of an absolute speed, but is not changed in any reference frame. And uh, the third principle of relativity, which actually talks about uh, not inertial frames, so not the frames that are going straight and without changing speed, but the frames where the speed can be changed, so they 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 are accelerated, accelerated frames, right? Or frames with accelerations. So now we'll talk a little about fourth principle of relativity, which is called I call it it's quantum observation relativity. Now, you should understand one thing, that though it is a principle of relativity, it is not called like this in modern physics, for, I don't know, for historical reasons. So people understand that it is, uh, it's um, the, whole, whole, whole thing, uh, the whole thing is about relativity, but they do not talk it in these terms. So, and, and the main guys who, who created quantum mechanics and quantum theory, and also this quantum quantum relativity were two guys, one, two German guys. Why, why is Werner Heisenberg, who, who created so-called matrix, matrix mechanics, quantum, of course, in about uh, around 1925. Quantum mechanics was actually created around 20s, 1920s. So 1925, he, he made a formulation of matrix mechanics. 
Uh, matrices, I think we talk about a little about matrices, right? Or not? It's a tables of tables of um, of numbers. Did we? Yeah. A little. So he used these matrices to formulate the equations of, of quantum mechanics. And the other guy was uh, German guy, okay? Aaron. Huh. This pronounces er, so it's Erwin Schrödinger, another German guy, who created the same thing, the same quantum mechanics, but he formulated not without matrix, but with so-called differential equations. Differential. Or they call it wave equations also. It's often wave because it's all about waves actually quantum mechanics is a lot about waves the waves of matter different types so <clears throat> what what is what is this or what is this about this principle and what these guys did actually i will talk short we'll talk much more later on all of this but right now we just talk a little the first of all the main principle of quantum mechanics says that that everything you will say everything is relative or something like this so the thing the object as we we observed some object like we want to research, make a research some some experience on object and objects looks like differently because we change the way how we look at it and in physics change the way it's not only like moving along right like like we spoke before right like moving in the boat or whatever or maybe in the in the elevator right <coughs> like falling elevator or accelerated some accelerator system frame frame of reference but also some other some other stuff like you use any device to study to make a study on something whatever elementary particles some form of matter anything stars galaxies so use some device experimental device and what was found out in 90s, 1920s of the previous century, 20th century, right? So, of course, it was found that uh, the results would be different in different when you use different devices. Before that, it was not like that. The first, the first of all, was found that if you want to, like quantum mechanics, first was dealing with the so things which are called elementary particles elementary particles so some small particles of matter right so they they may look like a stone right they, they are flying in space <laughs> they have time passing right so these particles should look like like particles and also they did so like for example if they if they fly they are very small right so they're invisible usually but if they hit uh, the photo mm, uh, photofilm or how you what the term for this Elish, maybe you know photoplastinka mm -hmm. uh, photo, photo I don't know okay so photo material photo material which actually reacts on light or anything else it also reacts at any um, or at any elementary particles so when it like photo photo plate right Say, oh, for the, like this. So when the particle hits this, it will it will uh, leave the mark here, like a dot, like a black dot. So and the mark because the mark is a dot, so you should think about like particles, like particles, like they small, they make a dot. If another particle goes, it make another dot, and all, all like this. So if you if you throw many particles, there will be many dots, right? Huh? So, uh, I, uh, I thought Peter, Peter had some questions. Yeah, okay, sure. No, 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 no. Yeah, Louder. Ah, okay. So, uh, just a, uh, just a, uh, so, so, oh, Jesus Christ. So, the plate. And um, you should understand that this plate, 
or photo, it's called photoresist or something, the term, the official term, but it's a little confusing. So this material, right, it just reacts to the particles, right, and, and uh, there are appearing dots on it when, when, the, uh, when the particles hit it. Uh, this, uh, this, um, this material, actually, it is a sort of a device. It's sort of an experimental device. You may use some other device, right? So if you use this device, you see particles as a dots. But when you see something else, like for example, if you put the same, the same photo, photo plate, right? But before that, you put some wall with two holes. It's a wall, right? <coughs> and it has two holes in it. And the particles are still going this way. Right? So, if those particles are real particles, like stones, right? You would see that some particles pass through this hole and make a dot here, right? Some other particle pass through this hole and make a dot here. And that's it. Maybe some particles will hit the, the borders of a wall, maybe uh, make, it, make it dots here around a little, you know. It's called dispersion. Anyway, but anyway, mostly it's like would be a dot. Dot here, dot here. If you make another dot, another hole, there will be another dot here, the third dot. But they found something different, very different, very different. Actually, they found out that when we have these two holes and the elementary particles hitting like this, the picture here would be many, many dots, many, many dots, but lots of dots here, then some dots here, some dots here, some dots here, some dots here. So you see? Many dots here, nothing here, many dots here, nothing here, many dots here, like this. So the, uh, so the picture, if you map this, right, would be like this. You see? Here, lots of dots, here nothing, here lots of dots, here nothing again, lots of dots, here nothing. This is sort of a wave. It's a wave picture. It is called interference. No, this is any particle. Right. Electrons, protons, neutrons, atoms, molecules, anything. Even if you even if you make this experiment on humans, like humans are flying, right? They still will create this pattern, interference. Human will be interfering. It's so called the name. We, we will talk about it later. But yeah. my question is the, the, the experiment you're talking about was for a No, any. That's what I'm talking. It, it may be light, but maybe not. Uh, the, the, this photo material actually it reacts with any particles. Okay, but the, the point the point I'm making is uh, if it, the reason I'm mentioning light is because it, it uh, travels in a straight line. So uh, the, the, that is what uh, that is why this uh, wave pattern on the, on the film is is uh, interesting because you would expect it to travel straight through uh, through the hole, right? No, it's not about just straight. The, 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 pa the pattern is interesting because it's a wave pattern. It's like a wave. That's also interesting, right? No, this is the most interesting thing. Okay. So this is the most thing. That is not, this, not traveling. Right. Yeah. When you're trying to explain to the kids that the particle if it goes through the hole, you would expect it to go straight like a bullet. Sort of. Yeah, you may expect it, yes. And interesting enough that if you close one hole, you, you will get one dot here, or something like this, close to one dot. It's a little more complex, we'll talk about later, but usually when you close the, the other hole, it will be one dot here still. If you close this, it will be one dot here, but when you open two holes, it will be like this. And it's very weird, very strange, and that was found and, you know, it looks like that the, the, those things are not particles, but waves, like this, waves going waves like like you know waves go into the beach right like this <clears throat> if the waves goes to three hole they they, they they form this pattern this pattern of interference it's a wave it's called, called wave pattern 
So that was found in experiments. And it caused a lot of, it's called, it caused actually a scientific revolution. Everything was changed in science. And actually, and they came to, to a certain, I, we will talk about this, uh, about this later, but you, you see that uh, this, this, uh, the result, the result, it's um, very closely connected with what you really do, what your experimental device looks like. When there was no holes at all, right, there was just one dot. When you put, when you add to this device, this hole should be two dots, but instead you have this wave pattern. And uh, you make it a little more complex this way or that way, you'll get a lots of lots of complex complex pictures, which, um, like for example, I'll, I'll show you another another thing. Like if you make the hole very small, it's still still the wall with one hole, right? But the hole is small, very narrow. And here again, there is this, uh, this photoresist thing. The picture will be like this. Here should be a dot, but there are lots of dots, but there are dots of only, also here, here, and here in small amounts. So dots goes like this. And again, the wave pattern, just a little different. So they started thinking that actually, <clears throat> first of all, <clears throat> some question or what, guys? What's going on? No, no, we're listening. Because some, somebody is talking there. Okay. <clears throat> so we're talking about elementary particles, but later, those experiments were mm, uh, were performed with other particles, not not simple particles, but more complex, like molecules, even with us, like huge molecules, like organic, close, not DNA, but very very complex molecules with many atoms in it, like like dozens of them and almost hundreds, right? And still they behave like this; they created these patterns. So we now know for sure that if we try to experiment even with people, it's very dangerous, but anyway, if, if, we, if we decide, we'll still will get this pattern, but it will be very difficult to actually to measure because the frequency of this will be very high. If you remember this, this formula, remember energy, this is frequency, this is Planck's co Planck constant, right? This is energy, and energy is connected with MET. Remember, you calculated the, your frequency, remember? So the frequency of the human is very, very high. It's very difficult to register. And the device should be very sensitive. It's difficult, simply, simply. So, so they came to this, to this principle of relativity, which means simply that uh, the things that you measure, that you, that you observe, uh, look looking very different in different, uh, when you use different devices. So it, it's actually a relative, relative on device that you use. But it was never formulated like this. No, no, the, this, this terminology was not used. It's still determined, determined for this is just quantum theory or quantum mechanics. But it's all about this. It's all, all, about, all about relativity, actually. So, and we'll talk about this a lot because this is more than physics, actually. But uh, later, we will talk about something that will explain certain things and what we'll talk later. So there is a, another principle which was formulated in 19, somewhere in 1995. And pr probably I'll, I'll talk about this, maybe, maybe not. It's, how many principles are there? For now we give five, right? Because this is like the end of all principles. This is principle simply... <laughs> In a certain way, it's very easy to say because uh, lots of people understand it. It's all is relative. All is relative. Nothing is like absolute. So you may call it absolute relativity. Um, and physically speaking, this principle means that you may use actually any, any reference frames, any reference frames that you want to use. 
The only difference will be that in different reference frame you will see another picture. Like for example, in general relativity, when you use accelerated frame, remember it looks like acceleration looks like a gravity, like a gravity field, right? Yeah. And um, in absolute relativity, again, you use one different frame, the situation change, and there appears another, 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 another fields, another energies, and lots of other things. But if you look at, at this like this, you will see that we can go step by step. We can go from very simple principles in physics and go it further, further, and actually spread it to, to explain lots, lots, lots of other things. Like for example, what we have to uh, what we have to explain. Quantum mechanics says quantum mechanics experimentally pro uh, has proven that first of all, elementary particles or quanta all matter consists of quanta. So lots and lots and lots of quanta elementary particles, which are not only particles, but they are also waves. It is called duality. So it has two, two main natures. There are particles and there are waves. So they call it this particle wave duality. This is one thing that was found in quantum, in quantum mechanics. So sometimes, depending on devices that you use relative to device, sometimes they behave like particles, sometimes they behave like waves. It depends upon the, actually what you use to, to, to look at it, right? The other thing, all quanta are, all quanta are identical. Identical means not similar, not looks like, resemble or whatever. No, they're identical totally totally physically it's a law of physics or modern physics so if you have two two quanta like two electrons you cannot distinguish them by any means there is no difference what about the location this is this is only location location is not like usually they don't talk about electrons that location is a feature of an electron right you may talk about it, like, but this is different approach. Usually in, in physics say that yes, electron here, electron there is still the same electron. Actually, it is not only the same, it's one electron. One electron. And um, what was found of these things, like for example, the first of all, that because they're so identical, right? And <coughs> So you have, like, for example, you have a lot of quanta or whatever quanta are, electrons, protons, uh, photons, whatever, all, all particles of matter, right? So, and they are all identical, right? So you may exchange any of them, like this with this, and nothing will change. Or this with this. Nothing will change. The picture will be still the same. Nothing will change in physics. You will not find anything different. different. If you exchange, so there may be, maybe many exchanges, they're all the same, right? So whatever you do, they're all the same. It's one thing. Another thing is because space time, space and time is actually, again, the relation between, ma between material things that are there. The space time does not exist by its own, right? It's based on the matter. So you have the matter, you have space time. They are, they are going always always together so because of this thing space time again it looks like it becomes very how will say the term um, very indifferent to the positions to the positions of the electrons because you can exchange these things they found also that electron, one electron, can be here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or, or in another galaxy, whatever. It's still the same. It's not, nothing different for space-time. So space-time is very uh, similar in many places, like for the electrons or for protons or whatever, whatever. So they're not only identical, but 
we may say that all points in space are identical if you talk about positions of any quanta. Like quanta here, or quanta here, or here, no difference. No difference. This was found by experiments. It was experimental data. And um, then it was formulated into equations and everything like this. But officially, there is no explanation to that at all. There is no explanation. So physics, for now, official physics, does not have any explanation. But this principle actually allows to, to find some interesting things about it. And we will talk about this right now. Uh, I wanted to recall, um, remember the process of counting. Remember we're counting one, another one, another one, another one, in the beginning of math lectures. Remember? One, one, one. <laughs> and all ones are the, same, are, are the same things. So ones in mathematics, units in mathematics, right, ones, are identical. This, this, um, uh, this identity is very close to what we, what we see in physics, actually, to the particles. So particles looks like they are ones in mathematics or something like this. So when we count, what we do? Like we like let's let's say, have a point which we say zero, right? When we start counting, zero, and then we count to one. We have one, right? Count to one. Then if we want to count to to. Uh, uh, to continue counting, what we should do? Usually people say, okay, we'll start from this point and go here, right? It will be two, right? Yeah. But what, when you, what, what do you mean when you start from this point? You start from zero. So if you start from, the, from this point, it means that you change your frame of reference, actually, physically speaking. So you, you were standing here and then you count to one. Now you want to, to, to count from here, then you should first put yourself here or something that is counting. So this is the change of frame of reference. So it's again, again, zero, and then you count to another one, which may be two. You may, you may call this two. But in between, you have this change of reference from one to zero. This is frame of reference change. So here we count, which we, so, something is changing outside, and here we change ourselves. We go from here to here, and again call it zero or something like this, or looks like zero. You understand this? Yeah. Okay. So, so in this process of counting, what I want to say, we have uh, we have the change, like which is called usually objective. And the change, the, the change of frame of reference, which is usually called subjective. This is the term, subjective. Because sometimes frame of reference is called subject. So we have two processes we may, we may uh, point, point in like, like this. From zero to one, this is counting, this is objective. And from one to zero, because we change the subject. This is subjective change. And you see 0 to 1, 1 to 0. We have actually a loop. From 0 to 1, from 1 to 0. This is objective part and this is subjective part. You see how frames of reference, how relativity goes into, into the plane? Something is changing in our frame of reference when we're standing in this point zero. So something is changing to one. This is subjective. And then we change ourselves. Our reference frame, we change it to zero and stand to this point. And that's for counting, right? But in physics, in physics, the same process will look, which will, will look like this. The counting is actually movement, motion. So we were standing at position zero, now we're standing at position one. 
another coordinate, right? Remember that, Antosha, you said, right? Another coordinate. So it's still the same particle, but in another position. We call this coordinate zero, we call this coordinate one. And the only change when something is changing, like abs abstractly changing, uh, we call this uh, the float of time. So this is time. Time changed. It was time zero, now it times one. We're counting time. And we're counting with certain device, like, like a clock, right? Clock. Time goes here, but then we change actually the clock in some way that we, we reset it to the position zero again, here. So here the time is running and clock is counting. And here we change the clock again. We, we reset it to, to zero position. It's our change. It's our change. This is change of some object. That's why it's objective and time. And this is change of subject. And this, if you, but if you look at this, yes, it is subjective, but it looks like it's going against time. So it's sort of anti-time. How can this be? It's the, it's a very simple thing. The same thing that if something is moving this way, right, with the speed v, and we're standing here, it's going with this speed v. Now. Let's do it like this. This is not moving, but we're moving. Our frame of reference moving with the speed of v. What we will see? Again, this thing is going like this. But we are moving totally opposite. You see? So the same thing. But if we go this way, this will change. So frame of reference and the object always move in different directions. They're opposite. You see? When the speed is there, this goes there, and if it's speed there, it's going opposite. So they're opposite. And that's why the same thing happens here. So if we say that time running this way, for, uh, for, for when, if you change when they change the frame of reference, it goes opposite way. It is, that's why it's so, sort of an anti-time. But anti-time, we're talking, we're talking very abstract in this thing. It's, something is changing, we don't know even what is changing. All is relative, we're talking about like total, absolute, like relativity, whatever. So if the time is change, so anti-time is anti-change. And anti-change is, what do you think is anti-change? Anti-time? Hmm? Anti-time? Yeah, anti-time, yes, but anti-change, anti this is anti-time, the same thing. So what, what it means, if some, we have something that's anti-changing. Conservation. Yeah, it's no change. This is the same as say no change, right? Anti-change is no change. <coughs> so it means simply that we are one equalized to zero. We actually, you know, we identified one with zero here by, the, by ourselves. It's our, our move. But anyway, whatever, so we have these two, two things, like, like simple movement, actually, we can, we can see from different, different points. One point is like regular time, and time is running this way, or another point is like sort of a conservation, right? Or preservation, no change. And this is because we move it like this. We move our frame of reference like this. So think about it. This is like a, there are lots of things to, to think of on this. But when you look at the change of matter or movement, whatever, in the in our universe, like this, like this, time and anti-time, right? We come to a certain thing which is called loop of time or time loop. Time loop. We have a loop. Any movement goes like this, from this point to this point to this point to this point to this point. But each time when we move to, to this point, we actually change the frame of reference again. Remember, we go back, go back, go back, because each time we start from this 
this is start point first, then this start point, the second, this start point, all of these are start points. So we move the start point here, or you may say we move it long from there back, back to the beginning, to zero. So this is time loop, and this is, of course, because it's a loop, it's a periodical thing, a periodical thing is sort of a wave. So we have thing that behave like a certain thing, local maybe, and the other it's sort of a wave. So it gives gives you some perspective to understand what it means for the particle to be at the same time a particle and at the same time a wave, because actually it is a time loop. The particle is actually a loop in time, which always returns back back in time. And uh, when you look at this, uh, at the whole situation like this, you will see a certain thing. First of all, uh, anti-time, if anti-time is preservation, we should look around and, uh, and see where, where are the past times which has passed. Where are they preserved in our universe? Huh? Yeah. Can we see around us something that is totally in the past? Right, right, everything, exactly. Everything is in the past. Actually, even our hand, it's what we see, it, it's in the past because it takes time for light to come to our eyes, right? And the uh, process in, the, in our brains and everything. Everything arose in the past. But everything around in the past, it lays where? It lays in what we call space. So space, space, space is the memory of the time in our universe. There in space, all the times what that happened, they conserved there, we see them. We can see like Andromeda galaxy is 1.5 million light years ago, right? So we see it how it was in the past, 1.5 million years. And lots of other things are all, all in time. So first of all, we see that so this, this thing, time and space and, and quantum, so it answers as a result, the whole this whole concept answers this first first main question, which we have in physics and mostly in quantum mechanics. First, what is quanta? What is quanta? And the answer is, at least according to this principle, it is that quanta is a loop in time, time loop. Second question, why we have, uh, remember in principle of relativity, we have fundamental speed, which never changed everywhere. All particles are actually move with, with the speed of light. Even if they don't move with the speed of light, actually they move it like this. It's still speed of light at each, in each position, but it moves in zigzag motion. Is that why it's a wave? Huh? That's why it's so? A wave? No, it's, it's, yeah, you may, you may talk about it's a wave, yeah, but it's not about it, actually. M mostly it's about, it's, it's uh, connected with the wave, with the same loop, yes, because this, this thing is actually, can be derived from here, this exact motion. But uh, what I want to explain here, that if something is, uh, how do you say this? How would it be? Huh? Thinking. Vibrating, yeah, sort of vibration, back and forth, right? Sort of vibration. So we have this, and then we, and if it's very fast, if we look, we see it like it, it stays in, in one position. But actually it's like jiggling, jiggling? What's the, what's the word? Like, like this, back and forth. So anyway, so the speed, the speed of light is fundamental. And uh, okay, the question why it is fundamental? Because in loop and time, this is time and this is anti-time. And the length, if you talk, they are totally, totally identical. All the time. So what is speed? Speed is space divided by time, right? So this interval, this interval divided by this, but they are all the same. They are preserved. So this speed 
is always like C, C speed of light, everywhere. So the, this question, when we answer that Quante's time loop, we got immediately the result that the speed is fundamental, only one speed everywhere. Second question, third question is the idea that uh, the, huh? I'm sorry. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. If they vibrate like this, and, uh, the, the speed uh, it's louder, uh, louder, Antosha, I can hear. If they vibrate, the speed of light? Yeah. Crazy yes. So you you want to answer this question? Yeah, it is. Uh, if you if you remember this Möbius, uh, how how it does this? There is a Möbius. How it is called? Polosa. How it called? Strip. Remember Möbius strip? Yes. So Möbius strip is certain thing which actually curved space simply. In curved space, the geodesic. So geodesic. It's a straight line. So no acceleration, remember? But when it goes in Möbius strip, if you if you remember, guys, what is Möbius strip? Like, it turns like this, so it's still the straight line, geodesic, the shortest line. There's no acceleration, but it changed the but it changed the um, direction while moving like this. It's inverts. So actually, actually, this this is was connected with this is connected with the Möbius Möbius. Mirrors space time. If you ask about acceleration, so there is no, huh? so there is no acceleration. No acceleration. No acceleration. No acceleration. No. In reality, no. But if you look like it looks like maybe acceleration, but it's not real acceleration because this is just space time is curved like this. That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are lots of cool things. So the third thing is, uh, the guys, mm, uh, pro probably you remember, maybe I, I spoke about this a little, that at certain time, uh, there's the, the two guys there, actually, apprentice of Einstein in 1942, it's, his name is John Wheeler, uh, he suggested that anti antimatter is a matter moving back in time. And actually, this theory was actually developed in pretty good way by Richard Feynman, another physicist, pretty famous one. And actually, modern physics, it takes this as it is. So it says that antimatter, it is a matter moving back in time. So it takes this, it uses it in, in all calculations and everything, but it has a big question coming with this position. And the big question is, if, like, a electron moving like this is electron, and moving like this is anti-electron, or they call it positron. Positron, it's the same as electron, but over the charge, not minus, but plus, electrical charge. If it moves like back, right, so each electron should have anti-electron or positron, each of them. So the numbers, the amounts of matter and antimatter in the universe should be the same. We should look around and see a lots and lots of antimatter. We can find some antimatter in experiments that can be created, but these are smallest amounts. And the, in the universe, whatever physicists did, they were doing like for a long time already, since this was proposed, they didn't find any even trace of a big, a big amounts of antimatter in the universe. So there's no antimatter. So, and so this hypothesis about moving back it has like big question, like in official physics. But in this principle and, and loop in time, you see there is a space. Anti time is space. It's not antimatter, it's space. So we have matter which is positioned in space. That's all. There is no moving electrons and anti electrons, anti electrons moving back in time. No antimatter. So it explains this. The other things, the question is, remember, all particles, all quanta are identical. Remember? That was found in experiments, right? If you talk about loop in time, if loop in time is continuing, each loop is a particle, 
but all the loops are the same, moving with the same speed, speed of time, right? Speed of light. They're all identical by definition. So we have explanation for this now. What else? Yeah, how quantum can be in many places altogether? Because they're identical, right? So they can be, because it's the same, it's one, one, actually one and the same quantum repeated many times. There are no difference. So the space and time are created by this process of quantum, which is circling, 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 and circling actually uh, happens something like this. Uh, klubok, klu? Klubok. So all the circles, and this is universe. And all these circles are actually the same, it's one circle. So whenever we click in the universe, we can find there the quanta. So it explains this position of quantum mechanics. And that's, uh, and that's mostly it. So we have we have we have something that this absolute relativity going straight to the uh, to the explanation of what what is quanta and quanta is a time loop. It explains a lots and lots of features of modern physics. And just j this is just for you to understand that there are, there is explanation for this. And then we'll talk about mostly about some experimental features of what happens this and this and there are lots and lots of really weird and like fantastic fantastic features which comes out of modern physics. Also we talk about the physics of 17th century which is so-called classical mechanics, how it goes and also like this. So questions guys on this? Okay. Confused on what? I don't know. I'm, I'm so confused I can't even ask a question. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Uh, you have some questions? Yeah. Can I tell you? No. You know, they, they usually have questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't questions okay okay guys you you'll think about it I'll give you questions right we think about them and then we'll talk uh, we'll talk we'll, we'll actually I understand that this is pretty 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 much but uh, why why I wanted to put it right away right now because we will talk about this in different in different uh, places with different things and we will talk about this again and again and again and I just want to you to you know to, to recall this these pictures and understand what what is going on here what is going on there all that sort of things okay okay uh-huh Say again, what? My tooth, my molar, it's gonna fall out soon. Your what? I don't. What is my it? My molar. Zaidi Oh, okay. <laughs> you think it's, you think it's connected with the quantum jiggling? Or what? What's this word? Oh, it's jiggling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta jiggle it. Remember Antosha, remember Antosha, that was uh, probably you remember Antosha's famous question to, to his grandma was that I am sitting sitting here at the table and also cr like crawling all over the space. Cursing into space. Yeah. So th this is about it. This is about it. Actually, we, we, we consist of quanta. We're all quantum creatures, actually. We consist of trillions and trillions and trillions of quanta, right? So it's like about 10 to uh, uh, 20, 26, I think, sort of that. 10 and 26 uh, quanta in us, right? And all these quanta are jiggling with the speed of light. Remember, speed of light. With the speed of light, each second you go 300,000 kilometers. And if you think they, they don't, no, they do. They actually travel. Each say yes, they, they do. You can measure actually quanta that goes from your body and goes very far each second. They go, they return, and they they create this pattern which we call ourselves. 
where the result of all these uh, zigzag motions and moving with the speed of light and this and this movement goes all over the universe actually but it goes like a, a small minuscule minuscule amounts of matter some some parts of our matter goes maybe to the Andromeda galaxy As, and some returns from there we but we cannot even feel it because we are as a whole we stays here as average like average is here but our particles goes very far so, but, but even though the average is here shouldn't we just look a little bit fuzzy <coughs> a little bit we are yes if you look if you took uh, the measurements really like quantum measurements you'll see this fuzziness yes you'll see it of course we'll see it but it's small you can calculate it this calculation goes to very you know complex mathematics but you can you can calculate okay guys so are you ready to, to write the questions yeah yeah okay Okay, uh, remember this process of counting of ones, right? Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, right? All zeros are actually the same, right? When you move it, this, the frame, we move zero to, to the second position, to the third position. Sorry, all the quantums aren't exactly the same because they were made, like they are identical, but they don't have the same ages. Yeah, that's another story. Yeah, we, we may talk about it. Yes, that's a good 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 point actually, but not to this lecture. Yes, yes, they are of the, maybe a different ages. But anyway, but anyway, uh, they looks like look this looks the same. Like we're talking about counting now. They look the same like a like a quanta, they 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 all zeros. But does this mean but if if, if they're the same, does this mean that this count this count can be done not only step by step, but from each point? Like, I will. Okay, so usually we go from here, zero to one, to here, right? Maybe two, whatever, right? And it's all zero, zeros because, you know, they're all zeros too. So they're not only one, two, three. But this will go step by step. But because they are the same, Shouldn't this process in the real universe? Should this process should start from any of these zeros? So from his to here have one, right? But the second step, would it be also from here again? Together with this? And from here and here, would it be like more of them? What do you think? Would it branch? Because all these all these points are the starts of another branches, right? So what do you think will happen? And can is it, is it correct? What do you think to think like this? Is it, is it a question? Yeah, this is a question. Yes. I want you to think about it and uh, to say what will happen and is is it correct? What do you think to to start it from any point? Like we, before, we're talking about counting like from one point to another, but all these points, the beginning points, are the same. And we're, when we're talking not about mathematics, but about like real universe, would the, these points be the starting points of another branches too? And would, what will happen in this case? Just think about it, if it's correct. Okay, you got, you got the question? What? Yes? It's, it's about relativity, I guess, right? It's about, yeah, every, about physics. <laughs> about relativity too, yeah, it's a very, a very interesting point of relativity. And we'll talk about this too. Yeah. You wrote it? Kat is writing it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kat is doing the diagram. And uh, so the question what would happen if we start counting from different locations, positions, and that? Uh, so what would happen if what? If we start counting from different uh, positions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay. Okay, done? Yeah. Okay, second question. So we talk about that time as a universal change, right? 
Time is a universal process of changing everything, right? So time is change. In space, if we talk like this, according to this principle, space is anti-change or no change, right? So the question is, does this mean that all in space is identical and unchanged? Because space is no change, right? Or anti-change. Does this mean that all in space should be identical or unchanged? Just think about it and answer, try to answer. Okay. Now the third one. What will happen? What will happen? If we change like two of points of in time, like in time, right? Like for example, this one and this one, and exchange the position. What will happen? What will happen with the whole thing? Just think about it. So this is process in time, right? So this is time. And now we we took two particles in time, right? And exchange. What will happen? This is if we put future into past or something? Oh for two particles. Just two. You think you just think about it. This is the question, right? You should use your brains, think about it, what will happen? Okay? Now and the second is you have particles in space. In space. Many particles, right? And you exchange like in space now, not in time. And again, exchange, exchange two particles in space. What will happen in this case? What do you think? And you think about it that particles are actually this loop in time and all that. Try to, try to process it in your mind. Done? Done? Okay, that's it. So think about it and come with some solutions, whatever, whatever you think on this, okay? If you have different opinions, give different opinions. What do you just try to you know try to to prove what you think? Okay, any questions? Any more questions? No? No questions. Okay guys, so see you next time then. Have fun. Love you. Have fun.